This combination light and fan controller has failed. Let's replace it. The issue here is when the light is turned on, it works just fine if we only bring the dimmer part way up. But if we push the dimmer switch all the way up, you'll see the light actually starts flickering. The actual slider is going bad. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this with a new combination style fan controller and dimmer switch. I bought this with my own money. This is not a sponsorship. Hey, my name is Dustin. I'm a licensed master electrician. Welcome to this episode of Smarter Sparky. Before we can safely work on this, we have to go turn the circuit breaker off. And now with the circuit safely off, we can go ahead and open that switch box up. You could use any sort of screwdriver to take these covers off. I really like these angled speedy screwdrivers. I'm not really sure what they're called. You can actually use these as a crank and it actually speeds up taking these screws out. So we're just gonna go ahead and zip them out really fast. Sometimes when these covers have been on for a while, they will actually stick to the paint behind them. So you need to be careful when pulling these off because you can tear the existing paint. Also, if you use your screwdriver to pop this cover off, you wanna make sure you don't actually put an indent in the wall in the shape of your screwdriver. Another thing I like about this pliers is the tip of the pliers is just the right size to fit in these holes and we can pry the cover off like that. And you can actually see this indent that's been put into the paint because of this cover. I'm actually gonna use my Phillips speedy screwdriver and zip these out really fast. Yes, you could absolutely use a drill for this situation as well, and that would work just fine. And here we go. Here's all the wires that are gonna be involved in this change out. I always like to just double check that the, my wires are dead. I am using a non-contact voltage tester. I've actually got a video about these, link right here. So after mutilating the childproof packaging, we're able to get to our switch and we're actually able to see in this case, there are actually fewer wires than we have right here, at least at first glance. But taking a look at the side, there is a screw terminal right here and that's gonna actually be our black wire. Now, this is one of those situations that I cautioned in the four-way switch video. Sometimes wires aren't used for the colors that they should be used for. In this case, this white wire we would think should be our neutral, right? It is not. This white wire is not a neutral. Let's take a look at how this circuit is actually operating in a diagram. Hey, future Dustin here. Let's take a look at this diagram and see how exactly this fan is wired up that there is no neutral at the box, even though it looks like there is. Before we do though, I've got to interject something here. I'm actually recording this part of the video after all the other work is done. So as of right now, that switch is working. It's complete. I made a slight mistake in the video and I'm gonna let that mistake come up naturally throughout the video and you're gonna see how it comes up and what we do to fix it. Basically what happens is I assume that the new switch and the old switch shared the same color combination. The old switch was not marked at all as to what the colors were. The new switch was. So I assumed that the yellow would go to the white and the red would go to the red. Turns out we had to swap those around. Again, I don't want to spoil how we found that. We're gonna actually see that come up in natural progression and I'll show you how we solved that. But rather than me redoing the whole video and you know, making it perfect to begin with. That's the reality of it. Sometimes we make those assumptions and things go wrong and we have to correct it in situ. So this diagram right here is actually the corrected diagram. So you're going to see in live here in the video as I continue playing this that I connect the yellow wire to the white wire that I re-identify with that black tape. We're going to actually need to take the switch apart later and flop the yellow and the red around. No big deal and we're actually going to see what happens when that when that occurs but that might be a situation you might run into in the real world. Colors don't match and we have to correct it on the fly. So let's take a look at this diagram and see why isn't there a neutral at that switch. Basically what's happening is they actually bring the home run all the way up to the box up in the ceiling. So this purple, let's imagine that's the box up in the ceiling for the fan. They actually bring the hot and the neutral right to that box. Notice the neutral, they're gonna bring right to the fan. So this, this dotted circle here is symbolizing the fan itself. So this is the whole assembly. This is the light, the fan, everything. 
And notice this neutral is gonna go right to the actual fixture. And notice this white wire, which I've actually got drawn as silver here, that wire actually gets tied to the light. So they're just reusing this wire for a different purpose, and that's actually gonna get tied to our red wire. Now remember here in just a minute, you're gonna actually see me connect that white wire to the yellow wire, but we're gonna have to take that apart later and fix that because it turns out the new switch actually has opposite colors as the old switch, making things a little more interesting. So that's why we don't have a neutral down here. The neutral actually comes right from our home run and is wire nutted right to the fixture. Now within the fixture, they actually split that neutral off to the light and to the fan, but in our connection, we're only gonna have a wire nut right here going to that fan, we'll have a wire nut here, and we'd have a wire nut right here. So that white wire going down the wall is actually gonna be the switch leg going to the light and the neutral stays up in the fixture itself. It doesn't even come down here. Our hot comes from the branch circuit and it's wire nutted up within the fixture box and then it goes straight down to the switch. So we're bringing that hot straight down, but that neutral just stays up in the ceiling. This new switch actually does a pretty good job of labeling everything. The red here is labeled lights and the yellow here is labeled fan. So now that we've already verified everything is off, we can go ahead and start removing our wires. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of black tape on this white wire. That way it tips off the next person that has to work in this box that this is in fact not a neutral wire. I'm not going to go overboard with it. I'm just going to put that little bit of a tag on there. That way it's obvious that something is up here. Now, because this new combination switch actually has a lug here, we're gonna have to go ahead and strip out this black wire just a little bit longer so we can get that proper loop on the end. So we'll go ahead and put our loop on. My personal preference when actually installing devices is I like to land the grounds first. Is there really a reason for that? Maybe not. I like to do it just in case something goes wrong while I am installing it. Always give the wire nuts a tug check just to make sure those wires don't come out. If you're wondering how to use wire nuts properly, check it out. I've got a video right here on how to use wire nuts. Now remember, we already saw that this red wire is actually gonna connect right back up to this red wire. And this this red wire here is actually what's responsible for powering up the lights up in the fixture. Because the 14 gauge here is a little bit bigger than this fixture wire right here going to the device, I'm actually gonna put this little fixture wire up just a little bit farther, otherwise the wire nut might push it down. So I'm maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe just shy of eighth of an inch past the end of that 14 gauge wire. And then just as we discussed, remember this white wire here is not a neutral. It's actually gonna be the switch leg for the fan itself. So we're gonna go ahead and land this yellow wire on this white wire. Remember, your installation may be different. When in doubt, consult a local electrician. Same thing, I'm gonna put the smaller wire just a little bit past the tip of the 14 gauge wire, and we can go ahead and twist our wire nut on. As always, every time you make a connection, you should double check it. None of the wires should come out of the connection when given a slight tug. And lastly, we have to land our hot wire. And that hot wire on this particular switch is gonna land on this terminal right here. This device has the ability to use what's called backstabbing, which you can actually just poke the wire right into this hole here. It's kind of like a one-way terminal in there where you push the wire in and there's a little catch in there that will hold the wire. I personally don't like using those backstabbing terminals. I've seen way too many of them fail in my career. I just don't trust them. So I like using the actual screw terminal, which is why I put this loop on here. So we'll go ahead and get that put on our terminal. Notice the wire is gonna follow the direction that the screw will spin once we start tightening it. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. Notice how the loop is not extending past the back side of the switch here. That's another thing we need to be sure to watch for when we're installing loops on terminals is we don't want the end of the loop sticking out past the device. That way nothing can rub against it and it's not gonna short out internally, especially on this bare copper wire that's just gonna be shoved in the back of the box. And there we go, this is actually ready to reinstall. So let's go ahead and push the connections back into the box. We can get our screws reinstalled, our cover on, and we can 
can go ahead and do the best part of doing a job like this, and that's actually seeing it work. As we discussed in the wire nuts video, wire nuts are hats, not buckets. So once we shove these back in the box, we do not want these wire nuts to be upside down like this. Debris and moisture can collect in these wire nuts. Yeah, you should never have moisture in that area, but you know, just in case, we want the wire nut to be in an upward position like a hat. So anything that falls on the top of the wire nut is actually gonna shed off the sides of the wire nuts. So what I like to do is push the back side of the wires down, then fold it in the middle like this. So it's kind of like a W shape coming out of the back. And then we can just go ahead and push them all in like so. And then we can line our device up with the holes in the front here. I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse the screws that were already here. So now we'll go ahead and put these screws in. And when you're putting these screws in, get them in most of the way, but leave it loose so the, the device is shaking right away. That way, once you get your second screw in, then you're able to line everything up and then finally snug everything down. In this case, it looks like there might be an issue with the mudding around this box. It's actually sticking up very pronounced right here. So in that case, we're gonna have to loosen things up a little bit and force the side of this box up over that, just like that. And because the mudding is so weird around here, I am gonna level this off. Normally I would not do this, but I, I noticed this box does look a, a little bit crooked and it looks like we're, we're pretty close to level right there. So I'm not gonna mess with it anymore, but you can see there definitely is a little bit of a difference with how much of the gap is showing on this switch. That shows me that the box might be tweaked in the wall just a little bit. If you've never seen one of these dimmer switches before, you're gonna notice there's these little tabs right here. You can actually break these little tabs off if you need to get gang two of these switches right next to each other. The problem with taking these little tabs off is it reduces the overall wattage that the dimmer switch in here can handle. So if you do remove these little fins, basically what they are is they're heat sinks. So by removing them, it reduces the overall amount of heat that this can dissipate. In this case, there's no reason to remove those, so we're just gonna leave them the way they are. And we're just gonna go ahead and install this existing cover. And again, I'm just gonna leave that loose for just a second while I get this bottom one started. Most professional electricians will find a standard position to leave their screws in. It's kind of a mark of professionalism, I guess you could say. I prefer to have my screws straight up and down. I do not like leaving the screws in any position. So I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these screws facing up and down. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it, it definitely is that last little cherry on top. And with that, this is ready to fire back up. So let's go flip the breaker and see if our light works. And I got back upstairs here, and it looks like the fan is already running. So let's make sure that's able to be turned back off. Well, this is interesting. Watch what happens here. We turn the fan on, and the lights come on. And we turn the lights on, and the fan comes on. So that's definitely an oopsie on my part, but rather than taking that out of the video here, that's the way things work in the real world. Sometimes we make assumptions. I assumed that the old switch had the same wire coloring as the new switch. I guess we're gonna have to swap that around. So let's go turn the breaker off again real quick. We'll swap these wires around and then we should be good to go. Let's try this again. So I just assumed that it would be color to color like the other one. So all we need to do here is just swap these around and the problem should be solved. There we go, crisis averted. Let's go ahead and shove this back in and second time's the charm. All right, let's try this again. Turn the lights on. Hey, hey, the dimmer works. So there is full brightness. I'm gonna have to learn how, ooh, it's even got a fancy dim down function. So we push the light switch button and it should go up to full brightness and it does. And then we push the fan button. It's going all the way up to high speed. And there we go. Honestly, this is probably the first time I've ever turned this fan on. <laughs> well, there we go, that's a wrap. 
Sometimes things don't quite go as planned. One saying I've always liked out in the field is being a professional doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. Being a professional means you know how to solve them. Again, I made that assumption that the wires would have been color for color and that's a good reminder that that's not always the case. So we saw that there was an issue and we were able to take care of it. If you made it this far, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.